Hello here, we're going to continue our investigation of finding derivatives of exponential functions and uh, some more situations we may find ourselves in. Uh, here you see the statement of the, the derivative we're to find, or let's find uh, f prime of x or the derivative if f of x is uh, the quantity e to the 5x squared power plus 3x, that quantity to the fourth power. Now, of course, uh, one of the challenges always is to visualize the problem in the correct fashion so that we know what to try. And so I, what, I'm, what I'm wanting you to remember is what we started with when we talked about the chain rule first. I'm needing you to think overall what this is. It's parentheses with a power on it. That's what we really see, isn't it? The function f is parentheses with a power on it. And so to find f prime of x, we must use the general power rule. So, you know, we have to be careful of concentrating on the inside before we see the big picture. And like I said, the big picture is parentheses with a power on it. So that reeks of this idea of the general power rule. So that's the way we'll begin it. Remember the way the general power rule works is that if we have something uh, in parentheses with a power on it, we bring the power down in front of the parentheses. We reduce the power that's on the parentheses by one, so that'd be a power of three. And then the chain rule part tells us that we have to multiply that with the derivative of what's in the parentheses. So in this case, we have to find the derivative of 5x squared, uh, excuse me, uh, e to the power of 5x squared plus a 3x. So that's the, that's the next part of our problem. So as we uh, work through this, let's see what we have. We'll, we'll rewrite the 4 and the parentheses with the power 3 on it. Now, in this derivative, we actually have a sum of terms. And so we have to take the derivative of the first term, and that's the e to a power. And so we have to remember, well, now how do we take e to a, the derivative of e to a power? Well, it's e to exactly the same power, isn't it? So e to the power of 5x squared, but then we have to multiply that with the, the derivative of the power. And so the derivative of the 5x squared is 10x, isn't it? 10x. So e to the power times the derivative of the power. And then we have a plus 3x. And so when we're taking the derivative of things added together, we add the derivatives together. So at the derivative of 3x we recognize is just 3. So now I, what I'm going to do is inside those brackets, I'm going to clean up a bit. Um, and, and, and let me remind you, just because I went through this kind of quickly without uh, actually writing it down. This 10x is really the derivative of the power, isn't it? So that's where that 10x came from. Okay, so let's just remember that. I didn't write it all out. <laughs> okay. Now, inside those brackets, we can rewrite it a little bit. So let's rewrite the 4 in the parentheses with the power 3. Okay. Now, I'm going to simplify, and I'm not going to have the brackets inside, so I'm just going to convert all of the big brackets outside to parentheses, and that 10x factor, I'm just going to write in front of the e. So it's 10x times e to the power 5x squared, and then the plus 3 is also in those parentheses. And so there's really nothing else for us to do. We've found all the derivatives, and this is our final answer. Okay, on the next page, we'll continue with our investigation of derivatives of exponential functions. Uh, let's, uh, let's do that now. Okay, here we see the uh, problem that we're given. Y is equal to 4x cubed times e to the negative x, and we're to find the derivative of y with respect to x. Derivative of y with respect to x. Now, <clears throat> Here again, it's, it's a matter of being able to recognize our situation. And of course we have e to power, e to a power here, but we have the extra stuff 4x cubed that's multiplying it. 
So I, it, it, we again, we have to train ourselves to begin thinking in terms of what are all these old things we already know. And what I'm wanting you to realize is that 4x cubed is really a function, u. And that uh, e to the negative x, we could think of as a function v. And so we really have y as a product of functions. <clears throat> so let's remember that the product rule is what we're going to have to worry about before we start taking derivatives. And that's what we really are concerned with in this case. <laughs> And the rock product rule says that if we have a function that is composed of a product of two other functions, then the way we find the derivative of that is that we take the first function and multiply with the derivative of the second, and then we add to that the second function multiplied with the derivative of the first. So that's the product rule, and that's what we're going to have to use here before we get started. So or before we, uh, as we get started. So the derivative of y with respect to x in this specific case is the first function, and the first function is 4x cubed times the derivative of the second function, and the second function is e to the negative x power. Okay, and then it's plus the second function, which is e to the negative x power, times the derivative of the first function, and the first function is 4x cubed. So as we go through our steps here, let's see what we've got. Uh, in the first term, we have this 4x cubed. When we go to find the derivative of e to a power, remember it's e to the power, and then it's times the derivative of the power. The power, of course, is negative x. And then over here, uh, to the right, we have the e to the negative x, and we can easily calculate the derivative of 4x cubed. We know that that's 12x squared. Now, it seems like we can do a little bit of cleanup here and uh, do a little more calculation. We have the 4x cubed, we have e to the negative x, and the derivative of negative x is just negative 1. And then over here on the right, we'll rearrange it and write it as 12x squared times e to the negative x. Now, again, uh, we can do the multiplication. That negative 1, we can actually multiply with a 4, can't we? So we could write this as negative 4x cubed e to the negative x plus 12x squared e to the negative x. And quite frankly, there's nothing wrong with that answer. You know, we, we really have done the work. Uh, but once in a while we notice, and once in a while the book will ask us, or the homework will ask us, to write our answer differently. That, that we'll see the answer and wonder why they wrote it that way. Well, we'll notice here that there are actually some common factors. You notice that 4 will go into 4 and to 12. And you see we have an x cubed and an x squared, so x squared is a common factor, and we see that e to the negative x appears in both. So we could actually factor out a uh, 4x squared and an e to the negative x. See, we could actually, we, we could do this. We could write this as, let's say, 4x squared e to the negative x, because we have each of those factors, and let's see. In the parentheses, we'd have to have an x I would have to have a negative x, wouldn't we? Because we've got to get a 4, we've got to get a negative 4, and x squared times x is going to give us the x cubed, but we have everything else. And then for the other side of that negative x, we need a 4 times a 3 to get the 12, and we already have the x squared and e to the negative x. So that's one way we could write it. Now, we, we might have noticed, see, we might have noticed here a lot of times when we start with a negative, we actually factor out a negative amount. Whoops. So we might have factored instead of a 4x squared, maybe a negative 4x squared e to the negative x. And in that case, we'd have a negative 4 times, we just need an x in this case, don't we? We just need an x in that position because we already have the negative factored out. But, of course, we would need a negative here because negative 4 times a negative 3 is how we get the positive 12. So that's an alternative way to factor it. That's an alternative way to write it. And then, actually, let me put one other thing out here. 
a, a lot of times when we see something like negative x plus 3, a lot of times we'll see it written a little differently so that we don't have to start that with a negative. See, we might write instead of negative x plus 3, we might write that as 3 minus x. So we, we really have several ways that the answer can be left. Which is best? I don't know that we, anybody knows which is best. It's really what someone is asking you for. Probably I would see uh, one of these two most likely. That's probably what, I, what we would normally see, one of the two that I've got boxed. Okay, let's, uh, let's do one more problem before we stop uh, this part, and uh, we'll do that on the next page. On this problem, you see that uh, we're out to find the equation of a tangent line. Uh, determine the equation of the tangent line to the graph of y equal uh, e to the 2x plus 1, the quantity to the third power, at the value x equals 0. Now, I hope this is beginning to be somewhat routine. Uh, it, 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 what changes is the type of function that we're dealing with. But remember, we are going to normally use this point-slope form, and that's what it's called. This is the way we actually come up with the equation of any line. It's called the point-slope form, and it's because it requires a point and a slope for us to input for the equation. And so, yes, we need a point, and it's labeled x sub 1, y sub 1 in this point-slope form. So, uh, it's a point on the line we're finding the uh, on the line in general and specifically this time it's a tangent line okay and then of course uh, the other part that we need is the slope of the tangent line and we recognize I'm just making a note that this is the slope of the tangent line and we recognize the way we find the slope of a particular tangent line is we find the derivative and then we evaluate it at uh, the x value in question. Now, <clears throat> let's get back to this, uh, this point uh, because that's, that's probably one of the th first things we need to consider. And, you know, we've had this discussion before. Uh, I'm not claiming that this is the graph that we're talking about. But we're certainly uh, talking about a graph, and uh, we're talking about something that's crossing the x-axis. That's x is equal to 0. And so we're wanting to know a tangent line here. And the, the issue, again, is that point of tangency is shared by the line in the graph. And so we can, so, so we can use the equation of the graph to find out what the point is. That's, that's the point, pun not intended. So we really know that our point has an x value, okay? Our point has an x value of uh, 0. And so our x sub 1 is 0, if you will. And so the way we find our y sub 1 is we put 0 into the equation. Although that's the equation of the graph, since that's the shared point, that's the same y value as well. So to calculate that, of course, then that means we're putting that 0 in for x. So we have 2 to a power that is 2 times 0, our x is 0, plus 1, and all that's to the third power. Okay, so that means our y value, okay, I'm, I'm going to skip the subscript right now just because that's silly. You understand what's going on. Uh, in, in our little formula here, 2 times 0 is 0, so this ends up being e to the 0 power, and plus 1, and all that's cubed. And then we remember that uh, anything to the 0 power is 1, so this is 1 plus 1 to the 3rd power. And of course, uh, 1 plus 1 is 2, so this is 2 to the 3rd power, or 8. And so the bottom line then, of course, is that our point we know is 0, 8. That's fairly straightforward. The issue generally is, the calculus part, is that we've got to find the slope. And uh, so that makes us a little bit more time, but when, that's what we're after now, the slope of the tangent line. Okay? And of course, to do that, we need the derivative. So here we go. We'll start out finding that derivative. 
Well, the derivative of y, pardon me, with respect to x, oh, this is kind of like uh, the problem before. We have parentheses with an exponent on it. See, this, we're finding the derivative. I'll just write it here. We're finding the derivative of y, which is e to the 2x plus 1 inside parentheses with an exponent of 3 on the outside. So we really have parentheses with an exponent. So that means use the general power rule. So we bring the 3 exponent down in front. We change the exponent to a 2. We reduce it by 1. And then we multiply with the derivative of the insides. And, of course, the inside is e to the 2x plus 1. Now, as we continue, we still have the 3. We still have e to the 2x plus 1 in parentheses with an exponent of 2. And then we look. Okay. We need to find the derivative of e to the 2x. And so that's e to the same power. And then we multiply with the derivative of the power. But the derivative of 2x is 2. And then we have plus the derivative of 1. But the derivative of 1 is 0 because 1 is a constant. Now, as we kind of investigate what we actually have here, let's see. We have 3 times e to the 2x plus 1 in parentheses with an exponent of 2. And inside these brackets, it is just a... 2 times e to the 2x, isn't it? And so we can multiply the 2 e to the 2x with the 3, and we end up with 6 e to the 2x times e to the 2x plus 1 in parentheses with an exponent of 2. That's our derivative. Now, the usefulness of that derivative we'll recall on the next page. So let me, uh, let me turn to the next page. Okay, I've just summarized uh, the pieces of information that we've come up with so far. The original function, the point of tangency, 0, 8, that's the point on the tangent line, and the derivative of the function, derivative y with respect to x. So what we remember now is that derivative allows us to calculate uh, the slope of the tangent line. And, of course, the way we do that is... Any, you know, any tangent line to the graph we can calculate the slope of because we use the x value that that point is at. So in other words, we simply evaluate this derivative for x equals 0. So we plug a value of 0 in for each x. So we have 6 times e to the power 2 times 0. And in parentheses, e to the power 2 times 0 and then a plus 1 in the parentheses, and we close the parentheses in a power of 2 there. Well, let's see what that is. We have a 6. We have a 2 times 0 is 0, so that's e to the 0. Inside the parentheses, 2 times 0 is 0, so that's e to the 0, and then plus 1 in a power of 2. Now, e to the 0 is 1 in both cases. Anything to the 0 is 1, so we replace those e to the zeros with 1, and you see that we end up with, what, 6 on the outside and 2 to the second power on the inside. And, of course, that's 6 times 4, or 24. So now remember, that's the slope of the tangent line. Well, we use the slope. Let's, again, we use the slope. That's m. It just found out it to be 24. And we use the point of tangency, and that's 0, 8. And we put in 2, y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. This says y minus 8 is equal to 24 times x minus 0. And, of course, it becomes y minus 8 is equal to just 24x. And so we add 8 to both sides, and we end up with y is equal to 24x plus 8. Uh, there is the equation of the tangent line to that curve when x is 0. Now, uh, in, in the next part, we're going to, uh, I'm going to present a uh, word problem, and I'm going to do it separately from this part. So this is the end of this part, and look forward to looking up or finding out about word problems.